Hi everyone. So, it's been about a month, which is a really, really long time. Um, I apologize for that. I don't really have any good excuse for that. I've been kind of busy. I've started this new routine. I'm already leaving the order of these meticulously crafted notes that I wrote just five minutes ago, so bear with me. But I've been meeting with tutors every day for the past two or three weeks. And it's good. We meet for an hour. They check over something I wrote. We talk in Spanish. At some points, they explain some issues of grammar, which usually are, are things I already have pretty well in hand. Although there's a few exceptions where, you know, things I'm not used to constructing in a certain way have to be constructed in a way that I'm not constructing them correctly. But it's been good. As I said, it was a less cheaper, and in my video from like a month ago, this is probably a more direct, effective, efficient way to, to prepare for the next time that I take the exam, which brings me to the next thing. Apparently, the next time that I'll be taking the exam will be in October. I asked them about taking it in July, and they said that it wouldn't be practical, and in the process, revealed to me that I was no longer in danger of like losing my spot in the doctor doctoral program here. So small victory. I would have celebrated it a lot more if they had told me this um, when I first passed the test way back in, gosh, April or March or whenever it was. But it's good news. At this point, I can only teach two classes when there's, goodness, something like eight possible classes that I could teach. So it is kind of limiting. So naturally, I want to take the test and do better in October. But I think between what I'm doing right now with meeting the professors on five days a week, a daily basis, and doing all the writing, worksheets, discussion, listening, things that, that come with that, that I'm probably on my way to at least passing to teach the first full year of Spanish, if not perhaps things above and beyond that. So that's good. It's a blessing. As I said, I kind of wish that they had been more explicit about things, and I'm not entirely thrilled that I'm not able to take the test again in July, but the powers that it be have ruled, and there's not much that I can, I can do about that, unfortunately. It has gotten me thinking a bit more about getting back on track with the other things that I have to do, i.e. prepare for my oral exams for the literature portion, um, coming up with the two lists, reading things that I know are already already on the list that I have to do, writing up a summary of the, the themes, a lot of things that I've had rattling around my head and that it'll be nice to get back to. What I've been focusing on more now, lately though, between this strange tendency to clean things, I had two roommates up until the Austrian one left on, I think, Monday this past week. And it's nice because she opened up her room she left me a nice little lamp, which I haven't had the chance to use, but it'll be perfect because otherwise I've always had to get up out of bed to turn off the lights, and now I can just turn off or on the lamp, which is exciting. She also left me some food, including some of that handmade tortellini stuffed with cheese or meat that you can buy in stores, and also like, you know, nice hearty stocks um, like her white wine, vinegar, and olive oil. It's very, very exciting, <laughs> more so than it really, really should be. But I also have access to the patio, which has been a bit pretty cool. I've gone out there just to kind of people watch or stare or things like that. And um, I have more refrigerator space. I miss her and stuff, but she was quiet, so I didn't really get to know her terribly well. And now I have a very, very big... I have a refrigerator that, that's pretty much all to myself. This is the Chinese roommate, who's also quite quiet, doesn't um, store a lot of things in the refrigerator. Anyway, I'm kind of spiraling away from what I was going to talk about originally. But with all of that has come this strange desire to just clean things, which has been good. I think I'm probably using it as a mechanism to distract myself from the things I um, that are more work cognitively, such as finishing this essay for uh, the conference in Venice, which, thank you for your prayers, I actually did get accepted into. Wonder of wonders. And I'll be swinging over to Paris a few days beforehand and then spending a couple of days um, extra in Venice to get to know the city. The program that they have for us is pretty intensive. Like Monday through Friday, there's presentations. In the evenings, there's social hours and stuff that I feel like trying to be a good, diligent 
student who's trying to learn everything and trying to network like crazy and make a good impression on the larger golden age community as a whole I should I should go to as much as I can so I'm gonna try and save all my tourism for for the um, the weekend after excited about going to Paris though never been there but a friend a few of my friends are there so it'll be nice to catch up with them and uh, nice to see the the city as well and my notes are just all in shambles now. I don't know why I even bothered to write all these things down if I'm just going to ignore them completely. That is indeed the question. Though, weirdly enough, in this strange spiraling discourse, I have covered a lot of things that I wanted to cover. So that's been good. One thing that I didn't cover was I visited a, a friend of mine who might be watching this, Alvaro who lives in Montilla, which is pretty close, a town that's pretty close to Cordoba. And it was great. I think before that, I just needed to really get out of the city, get into some countryside. And Montilla is on top of this mountain that's just really surrounded by farm fields and olive groves. It was embarrassing. Um, we went for a bike ride. I arrived on Friday and we stayed, I, I stayed there until Sunday. We went for a bike ride on Sunday and I was like dead, but dead, uh, <laughs> like 20 minutes into it. And I realized at that point that despite everything, all of this climbing on and on about going to the gym on a daily basis, I definitely have lost some of my ability to do cardio. So I'll be thinking about how I'm going to do the next stage of the whole gym thing. I'm on, next week will be the last week of my current routine. Then I'll have two weeks, then I'm going to Venice where I imagine I probably won't be doing a lot of gym things at all. So I'll probably try to do a bit more cardio, do the whole, keep the muscle while cutting down the fat thing, which I've kind of been looking forward to. I've, I like my plan, but eating well for it and the nature of the plan itself has meant that I think I probably gained maybe a pound or two of fat, which I, I kind of would like to, to drop, even though it might not look like it. Anyway. But he gave me a wonderful tour of Montilla, which has a lot of history. Cervantes, the guy who wrote Don Quixote, lived there. Um, Alinka Garcilaso de la Vega. Uh, Alinka Garcilaso? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Alinka Garcilaso de la Vega, a gran capitan, two church fathers who I hadn't really heard of, an artist who had really beautiful paintings and I probably should have heard of. Um, it's a relatively small town perched on top of a mountain with, again, just a surprising amount of history. I also went to Cordoba, um, which apparently during the, during the Renaissance was a very, very big city. The old quarter was far bigger than anyone that I've seen in, in any other city that I've been to. Um, although I haven't really, weirdly enough, I still haven't checked out the, the one here in Granada, such as it is. But really great. Um, everything closed down, unfortunately, around two o'clock. So I saw what I could, which was still pretty good. And just spent a few hours after walking through the streets of the city. And it was just really, really good. I'm going to post some pictures um, in an album on Facebook, as always, at some point. But that might have to wait a day or two yet, as I just really want to get done with this paper for the, the ISO conference, which is going well. I'm feeling more and more confident about what I'm writing. It's just kind of the age old thing of there's, I want to say more than what I said in the original 15 page paper, but this has to be eight pages. So it's a question of trying to fit everything into a small space. Well, you know, saying as much as I can as, as efficiently as I can. So there's that. Anyway, getting back to last weekend when I was in Monte and then went off the Cordoba, great old part of the town wonderful history. Unfortunately, a lot of things closed around too, so I didn't get to see a lot of the smaller churches, uh, museums, synagogues, other places of historical importance, just because I got in around, uh, I want to say 11 or maybe 12 o'clock. I did see the Mezquita, which you will also see pictures of. It's incredible. It was um, a mosque that was built on top of the remains of a Visigothic church. And then during the Reconquista, we appropriated it into a Catholic cathedral. And it's just incredible, the synthesis of the Catholic elements and the um, Muslim elements, um, just really, really breathtaking. It's characterized by these rather relatively low 
arches that are striped white and red. And just going in, it gives you the impression that it just kind of goes on forever. It was really, really, really big. I feel like it was bigger than other cathedrals that I've been to, though it might have just kind of been um, the impression that I had. And right in the head, right in the center of it, where they do the church service, it was just really, really lush, baroque, um, ornate, everything. So I'll show you pictures. It was definitely, definitely, that alone was, was worth the price of admission, the trip to Cordova, everything. Um, definitely one of the greater wonders that I've seen here in Spain. I also got into the Alcazar, the, the fortress there. And to be honest, the, the gardens were nice and very, very impressive. The inside of the building itself was, was kind of so-so. They had a few Roman mosaics that were pretty cool, but you know, after other Alcazares that I've been to in northern Spain, or the Alcazar in um, Sevilla, or the Alhambra in, uh, here in Granada, it, you know, was perhaps a little disappointing. But all the same, glad that I saw it. So, that's pretty much that. In Montilla, Alvaro was an incredible host. Um, gave me a good tasting of this really, really tasty sherry that his family keeps in the basement. And I have to run to the library for him on Monday to bring him a couple of essays that he, he asked me for and I've um, been very, very negligent in doing. So, that's pretty much my life in a nutshell. Jim's going well. I'm enjoying it. I don't think it's like the sort of thing that you can see in a headshot alone, but I, I feel like I'm getting more mass, which has definitely been the goal. And in a relatively short amount of time, I feel like Granada is a good place to get cheapish, cheap-ish protein that's lean and just has a lot of gyms in this part of town. So it's been, it's been very, very good. I've been thinking a bit more about my my form on some things, um, partly because I'm noticing a few small pains in my back, and of course that's something you never, ever, ever want to play around with. So I talked to the monitors there who have been very, very helpful and gave me some good pointers, and I think I'm ready to lower the weights a bit and focus more on form and that sort of thing. So. That's kind of it. Right now, everything's just getting ready for the conference. After that, it'll be getting ready for oral exams and to take the test once again in in October. I'm pretty um, optimistic about everything. I've been praying more this week, which has been good, and being more active about remembering all of you in my prayers, of course. And I think, too, that that's given me a peace of mind and enabled me to focus a bit more on the things that I've had to do but just don't want to do and will spend... Uh, endless uh, endless minutes and endless I don't know I guess I don't know how to finish that phrase this is a problem with speaking well not that much Spanish but enough Spanish where it's difficult to to switch mm, but I procrastinate too much but I feel like being able to pray and put all of my worries in front of God has done a lot to, to help me stay focused so praise God for that anyway 13 minutes which not bad for having stored up a month's worth of things. But I'm pretty happy with the length of this. And other than saying that at some point, I really want to go to the beach. That's definitely definitely in the old crosshairs right now. That That's pretty much it. So thanks for tuning in. I am missing of all of you. I do remember you in my prayers and hope to hear from you soon. Right now, the tentative date is, I think I'm going to spend the first two weeks of September here, do one week at home in Muskego, and then maybe a week um, getting things set in Chicago. I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do is just sublet for the fall quarter and hopefully avoid the rather annoying process of having to move furniture back in and the nightmare of apartment hunting and things like that. I think I'll just be fine to live in someone else's place for and go uh, by, you know, by quarter, from quarter to quarter. So look forward to seeing you all again. And this is David signing out. Ciao.